In the CPUID section, we talked about the idea that there's going to be an ever-increasing number of features as a processor evolves. And so generically, any sort of processor maker is going to need some way to let software query the hardware and say, you know, what features do you support? CPUID is that way that software finds out what features are supported, but then after the fact, after you find out that some feature that you want to use is supported, what do you do? How do you enable it? Well, this mechanism on Intel systems of model-specific registers is the way that Intel can allow features after they're checked to be present with CPUID to be enabled and configured uh, specific to this particular hardware. So over time, this list of model-specific registers has just grown so large that it became its own volume of the Intel manuals. And so what you'll see in there is a mix of things called architectural MSRs, these are the things that are essentially so common that they should be treated as uh, belonging to all processor families. And then you get the actual model specific registers. So then there's a giant list of, you know, for this model, it supports this. For this model, it supports this. And there's going to be a naming caveat that uh, you should be aware of. When you start looking at the manual, you'll see things start with IA32 underscore if they're an architectural MSR. So if you see IA32 underscore, you should think to yourself, this means it's just a MSR that everybody everywhere should be able to look up. It's not specifically limited to 32-bit execution. So how would you look up, how would you read and write these model-specific registers? Well, you start with the read MSR assembly instruction. And here we're going to add a new terminology or a new indication. Every single assembly instruction we've seen thus far has been a star that's a little yellow star. And now what we need is some way to indicate that this particular assembly instruction is only executable from privileged environment. So the red star does not indicate that it's you know seeking to overthrow the bourgeoisie. Actually, the red star in this class means that this particular assembly instruction can only be used by the privileged elite in kernel mode. It's practically a tool of the oppressors. So read MSR, this cannot be used in user space code. It can only be used in kernel code. So what does it do? Well, it reads the MSR specified by ECX. So you just stick some value into ECX, execute the read MSR command, and expect that the output will come into EDX EAX. So again, just like CPUID, it's still using 32-bit uh, values. It hasn't changed over to 64-bit registers. So these are just the registers that it's going to use. All right, so the correspondent to reading the MSR is writing the MSR. This is how something like an operating system would configure these security features and enable these security features or just general system features. So of course, if you know normal user space software could reconfigure the system to turn off some security functionality, that would be extremely bad and that would be sort of an indefensible security position. So that is why these things are restricted to only being usable in kernel space. So write MSR is the you know, inverse of read MSR. It's going to take a 64-bit value in these two concatenated 32-bit registers, and it's going to write it to whatever MSR you specify by sticking some number in ECX. So what could we read? What could we write? Let's go take a look at something interesting. Well, this class is about 64-bit architectural support for operating systems. So if we look at the man page and we find the architectural MSRs, we scan down, eventually we find ourselves at C0000080. And this is the IA32 EFER register. Now I'm going to have another little indication in this class of a orange icosahedron for MSRs. Why? Why not? So whenever you see a orange icosahedron, that means we've got a little MSR somewhere on the page. So IA32 EFER is the extended features enables MSR. And so amongst these features are bit eight, talks about whether or not IA32 E mode is enabled, right? So this also was known as IA32 EFER LME, long mode enable, and it is a read and write bit. And this is the thing that actually enables 64 bit mode. So we showed before on that you know, finite state machine that there's some LME, long mode enable thing that gets you from normal protected mode into actual 64-bit mode. And here's the bit. It's this bit in this MSR. Furthermore, there's another bit here, bit 10, 
IA32E mode active, and this tells you whether or not you know the mode is actually active right now. This is a read-only thing. All right, so back to this uh, state finite state machine. We saw real mode, make your way up to protected mode, and then right here, efer.lme equals one was one of the bits that gets you to long mode. Not everything, so we've still got more to learn, but you know we've we've found one element of the picture so far. And this is again why I don't like the Intel version because it just says LME, it doesn't tell you where it is. At least the AMD one says it's in the EFER register. Oh, there's Black Manta, there we go. All right, well, if we go back and we look at the man page here though, there's some comment over here that says, if CPU ID 800001, EDX bit 20 or EDX bit 29. So this kind of implies that this model specific register is probably only available if CPU ID returns, you know, true, returns one for this bit 20 or bit 29 in a CPU ID query of EAX equals 80001. So we could go back and look at the CPU ID man page and we see for 80001 uh, EDX output of bit 20 is execute disable bit available. All right, well, that doesn't seem to have anything to do with this, but bit 29 is Intel 64 architecture available. So there you go, there's that, in one, one page it says IA32E, and another page it calls it Intel 64. So bit 29 is going to be the bit that we really care about to find out whether or not we can check that uh, IA64E enabled. So let's go ahead and go over and see what it looks like. For instance, if we run one of these restricted instructions like read MSR from user space, which I just told you should only be possible to run in kernel space. So I'm gonna start up my VM here, hop on over to user MSRs. There is, I don't need to use any raw assembly here because there is a compiler intrinsic for read MSR and this thing will happily let me compile it in user space. So let's go ahead and build that and let's set a breakpoint at the beginning and the end of this particular code. Let's run it in the debugger. And let's just go ahead and you know continue, let's see what happens. All right, well, we didn't make our way to this final breakpoint. Instead, we stopped here and it said, exception unhandled. Exception, privileged instruction was executed. And so, you know, it's not going to let us run this code. And that exactly jives with what we expect. Okay, well, having established that we can't run the read MSR command from within user space, let's go ahead and do it from within kernel space. We have a separate project, k underscore MSRs, for building the kernel driver for that. And you should look at the website for the instructions to follow along and do this after I show you how. Oops. So over here, KMSRs, same thing uh, as the user space version. It's got the exact same you know, use of the intrinsic in order to read from C0080. And it's checking again the long mode enable bit, the long mode active bit. So let's go ahead and build that. And then after it's done building, you'll see the absolute path to the locations where the output is. So go ahead and copy, you'll copy that ultimately. You'll go to that location and you copy the kernel driver itself. Go over to your VM, drop it into C colon OST2. And from there, you're then going to run the devcon command in order to install it. Before you install it, you want to make sure your kernel debugging is set up and that you can see debug print output. So this again is just like uh, you had done in past labs in the intermediate win debug uh, class mini course. So you need to make sure that you have the verbose debugging set. So I go ahead and do that and hit go. All right, and now I can go ahead and load this kernel driver. It's gonna ask me if I wanna install it. I say, yes, I do. It's gonna take a little bit in order to process it before it executes it. But once we get back to a command prompt here, then the kernel driver should have been loaded and we should see the output of the driver over in the WinDebug screen, command window. 
So what do we see as output? Well, we see some of our stock, you know, driver entry, print, and the event add device. But what we care about is it took IA32 EFER and it printed out the value, which is DE01. And then specifically, it looked at the bits LME and it says that's one. So it's running in 64-bit mode and LMA and that's one. So 64-bit mode was active when this code ran. So that's the output that we expect. And you know you should already know this, but there is an easy mode here in that WinDebug does have a read MSR and a write MSR uh, option. So you could get the same thing. You don't need to use a kernel driver in order to do this. You just need to be doing kernel debugging. And from there you could do read MSR, read MSR, yep, that was right. And see one, two, three, one, two, eight, zero. And you see the same value D01. So go ahead and now run this lab yourself just to make sure that you have kernel mode uh, driver execution working, that you have debug print working, and that you can use the read MSR command from within WinDebug.